Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're talking about factoring a binomial. So we've talked about factoring four-term problems, factoring trinomials, and now we're talking about factoring binomials, okay? I think binomials are the easiest. It's kind of like after you've mastered four-term problems and trinomials, I feel like binomials are kind of a breath of fresh air because it's a little easier. You just have to remember what you're looking for, okay? So let me show you what I mean. When we factor a binomial, we're asking ourselves a question. This is really a question that we're asking. Do we have a difference of perfect squares? Okay, so we've got to remember what is a perfect square? So perfect squares are numbers like um, immediately uh, four comes to mind, okay? And then what I mean by it's a perfect square is I could take the square root of four and I could get a whole number, two, okay? Um, another one that comes to mind will be like 16, okay? I could take the square root of 16 and get a whole number, okay? Other numbers, these numbers will be perfect squares, all right? If you can get a whole number out of it, it's a perfect square. Um, and what this essentially means is in order to get 4, I would do 2 times 2. So this number times itself would give me 4. Um, same thing with 16. So because it's a whole number, what this really is saying is that 4 times 4 would give me 16. Um, so other numbers, like let's say 7, okay, and let's just show this on the calculator. If I were to try to take the square root of seven, I see it's not a whole number. It's a really long decimal. So seven is not a perfect square, but just so you can see if I did four, I get a whole number. That one is a perfect square. So now that we've figured out what is a perfect square, we ask ourselves about the binomial we've been given. Is it a difference? Difference means subtraction, okay? Is it a difference of perfect squares? So let's look at an example, this first one, x squared minus 9. Okay, first question, is it a difference? Okay, am I subtracting? Yes. Okay, there's a subtraction symbol there, I am subtracting, I'm good on that part. All right, is this binomial made up of perfect squares, meaning each term? So let's see, I've got x squared and I've got 9. All right, so is x squared a perfect square? Well, we can't just put a variable and a square in our calculator and it'll tell us, oh, the answer would be x. But think about it. x squared is the same thing as x, or is the answer to x times x. So the square root of x squared is just x. So yes, that is a perfect square. All right, what about 9? Is 9 a perfect square? And if you check in your calculator, it is. The answer is 3. 3 times 3 would be 9. So yes, these are a difference of perfect squares. So once we have that, once we've done our little check sheet, you create one is going to have a subtraction sign and one is going to have a positive sign. This is going to be the only difference between these two. All right, now I take my perfect squares and I separate them evenly. So I said x squared, the square root was x. The square root of x squared is x. So I put 1x here and 1x here. All right. We said the square root of 9 is 3. So I put 1, 3 here and 1 here. And that's it. That is all we do. That's as far as we can take this because this is an expression. There's no equal sign. We'll get to that in the next video. Well, what happens if there's an equal sign? We'll, we'll, we'll handle that. But for now, this is just an expression. So this is as far as it can go. Um, if I were to FOIL this back, you should get x squared minus 9. Okay? So that's it. That's as simple as these are. Let's run through another example. Now, this example... And I should have stated it as my first step here, and that was my fault for just kind of bypassing it. But I should have asked myself the first question I always ask myself when factoring. Do I have a GCF that I could go ahead and pull out right at the beginning? And I don't. And that's why I kind of breeze past it is I kind of do that mentally and, and keep going. Um, but 
I should have voiced that out loud. Do I have a GCF? And the answer was no. So that's why I went ahead and, and asked myself, do I have a difference of perfect squares? Here, I need to start out by asking, do I have a GCF? And in this case, I do. Okay, so I always start with the lower number. I can tell immediately these have a GCF because they're both even numbers. So I know 2 will go into 18, and I know 2 will go into 32. So I know I at least have a GCF of 2. I might have something bigger. I don't know. Let's think. So what is everything that goes into 18? Well, let's just do off to the side here. I've got 1 and 18, right? 2 and 9 and three and six, and that's it. Do any of those numbers go into 32? Okay. So a quick check on your calculator, or if you're, if you're good at your times tables, will say 18 does not go into 32 evenly, nine does not go into 32, six does not go into 32, three does not go into 32, nope. And the, delay, the highest number that goes into both of them would be 2. All right, so let's factor out that 2. Now I can't pull an x out because even though this one has an x squared, that one doesn't. So I can't pull, this one can't give me what it doesn't have. So let's just pull out the 2, divide it out, and let's see what we have left. 18 divided by 2 would be 9, and then I've got my x squared. Negative 32 divided by 2 would be 16. So negative 16. All right, now that I've pulled this out, I ask myself, do I have a difference of perfect squares? Okay, is it a difference? Am I subtracting? Yes, so I'm good to go there. Is 9 a perfect square? We already talked about 9 over here. Yeah, it is. Is x squared a perfect square? We already talked about that one over here. Yes, it is. What about 16? Is that a perfect square? Well, we mentioned that one up here. Yes, it is. And if you needed to double check on your calculator, these feel free. Okay, but they are. This is a difference of perfect squares. So kind of like we did in the last video with this GCF, just so I don't forget to include it with my answer, I'm just going to draw a little arrow down. Okay, I'm going to keep solving, but I want to make sure I remember to list that GCF with my answer. Okay. So since I do have a difference of perfect squares, this is where I create, this one will have a negative, this one will have a positive. That's their only difference, okay? So let's think, what is nine? What is the square root of nine? Well, we did it over here and we said it was three. So three and three. What about x squared? What's the square root of x squared? Well, we said that was x. So one here and one here. What about 16? The square root of 16 we mentioned up here was 4, so 1 here and 1 here. And I don't want to forget that I've got to include that 2 in the answer. Okay, that was the GCF I pulled out right at the beginning. Because this is an expression and not an equation, there's no equal sign, this is as far as I can take this for now. Alright, let's look at a third example. Now, first question, and I make sure to point this out. Do I have a GCF that I can pull out? Well, x squared and 4. No. The highest GCF I could pull out would be 1, which wouldn't do anything anyway. So, no. My next question, is it a difference of perfect squares? And they go, yeah, let's go ahead and proceed with factoring. Um, but here's the thing. Is it a difference of perfect squares? That's a plus sign. It is not a minus sign. So this is um, not a difference of perfect squares. So what does that mean? Well, it means this is as factored as it's gonna get. This is not factorable, okay? It's just gonna be x squared plus four. That'll be your answer. Or if you just wanted to say not factorable, that would work too. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.